The shooting of two TDs in early December provoked another sharp response from the Free State authorities. In emergency session following Sean Hales's death, the government ordered that in reprisal four Republican prisoners, Richard Barrett from Cork, Joseph McKelvey from the North, Liam Mellows and IRA leader Rory O'Connor be executed without trial. The cabinet decision on O'Connor had caused Minister for Justice Kevin O'Higgins the greatest difficulty. Barely a year earlier, O'Connor had been best man at O'Higgins' wedding, just months before he split with his old friend to become commander-in-chief of the anti-treaty forces. Dad, who was in charge now of the army and who obviously had great influence in the conduct of the Civil War. He went to the cabinet and he was supported by his army council and he said, we must take drastic action to prevent any further shooting of the people who are representing the people of Ireland and who are supporting the democratic process. And it was he who influenced the cabinet to take out, the, quite illegally, to take out the four prisoners from Aunt Joy and shoot them. Right up to the end of his life, he always maintained that it was the right thing to do. It was state terrorism. It was a repressive response. Um, it was outside the bounds of, of legality. Um, and I guess what they decided was the situation was so grave that they had to take this kind of action. And again, there is this sense that the government doesn't know whether it will survive. There's a real sense of fear and insecurity among government ministers about the ability of the free state to overcome the rebellion and to survive. The key ministers were Kevin O'Higgins, Taoiseach W.T. Cosgrave, General Richard Mulcahy, Owen McNeill and his fellow northerner Ernest Blythe, and Minister for External Affairs Desmond Fitzgerald. The decision they took was one they took uh, um, out of a very strong moral conviction that if they didn't do this, the assassination of deputies by the Republicans might lead to the collapse of parliamentary government and to anarchy. Um, that's not a justification of what they did, it's an explanation. Because in living in their time, one has to understand how they approached these things. But uh, he had uh, never any doubts, I think, that it was the right thing to do. You may say he should have had, but that's my opinion. But he, he did not have any doubts that they saved the state by the action they took. Not everyone was so convinced. Almost for the first time in the Civil War, newspaper editorials and international observers responded critically to the reprisal executions. Among the public, there was a deepening sense of despair. I actually saw the men who did it coming back from wherever they did it, and they were swinging their revolvers. I saw a, a couple of soldiers there standing drinking tea. I suppose it was tea, it was the morning, of course. And a little way at the side, I saw a soldier kneeling in the sentry box. Whoever he was, I suppose he knew the men who had been executed and there was a gloom over the prison, or over, over the whole city that day. There was a dark cloud. I wouldn't approve of it. I'd arrest them, and I'd keep them there until such time as there could be some other decision made. But I don't think, I don't think that they could ever take them out and shoot them.